Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Invocation by River Tree Wesleyan. Thank you for having me. Heavenly Father, we just, uh, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for this evening. God, we thank you for our town. We thank you for Mitchell. I thank you for all of the beautiful faces that are in this room here tonight, Lord. We pray over this time. We dedicate it to you, God. We give it up to you. We give our town up to you. We ask, God, that this time would be a fruitful time. We ask, Lord, that you would give us wisdom to be able to know how we can continue to improve the quality of life for everybody that lives here. God, you are so good to us. Thank you for your goodness to us. We pray this all Jesus in your name. Amen. Thank you. Roll call, please. Savor Savers? Here. Goldhammer? Here. Dosher? McCardle? Here. Barrington? Here. Bathkey? Here. Charts? Here. Smith? Here. Okay, we have a quorum. I'll point out to you item 21 has been removed by the uh, applicant, so that one we will not be addressing tonight. Uh, approval of consent agenda items. Items appearing on consent agenda may be removed by a council member. Discussion begin formal agenda items. Is there anything you wish to remove? I will point out that the grant shown there is for JVCC. It's one they submit to the state yearly for uh, buses, a new bus, uh, the replacement of the heaters, the existing heaters in the new south uh, ice rink went out. They were actually the original heaters from the north rink that were relocated when the building was built. So uh, they gummed up with carbon and no longer function. So that is to replace those. We're trying to get them done before the adult tournament in two weeks, Mr. Nelson. Week from Friday. Thanks. Week from Friday. So, okay. Anything else? Move to approve the consent agenda. Motion by Mr. McCardle, second by Mr. Sabers. Further discussion? Anybody in the audience wish to address any of these items? Roll call, please. Smith? Aye. Sharks? Aye. Bathke? Aye. Barrington? Aye. McCardle? Aye. Dosher? Aye. Goldhammer? Aye. Sabers? All right. Motion carries. Citizens input. If you need to address mayor, member, city council, an item that is not on the agenda, excluding personnel items, come, for, come forward to the podium, state your name and your concern. Presentations are limited to three minutes. Items will be considered, but no action will be taken. I want to start this off by asking the girls' gymnastics team from Mitchell High School to come up front here. We're going to honor them with a proclamation. And then we will honor the boys' team. Yeah, chips, chips, yes, yeah, got it on. Come on up, all the way up. There's a camera up there, they want to see you on whatever they're watching on, either the internet or television. So just kind of follow them. There you go. Go through. Okay, first of all, congratulations, lady, on an outstanding year. Uh, we have a proclamation to read for your team. So, whereas the city of Mitchell believes the student athletes are an important part of the Mitchell community, whereas under the leadership of head coach Audra Rue, the 2024 Mitchell High School gymnastics team set a school record of 151.444 and have now won back to back state titles in an astonishing seven out of the past 11 state championships. Whereas, in addition to claiming the 2024 state AA championship title, the Mitchell Colonels gymnastics team had two athletes claim individual state titles. Bentley Bates claimed two individual state championships on the bars and beam, and Olivia Pronte claimed the state championship on the vault, whereas the Mitchell Colonel's gymnastics team has also claimed an additional 12 top five, or excuse me, top 15 finishes, whereas Bentley Bates, Olivia Pronte, and Kenyon Kelly, Kiana, sorry, thank you, Kiana Kelly are named all, or all tournament finishers, Whereas the accomplishments of the athletes on this team are admired and respected by the Mitchell community and demonstrate the character that athletes at Mitchell High School possess. 
Whereas the City of Mitchell would like to recognize the 2024 Mitchell High School Gymnastics for representing the Mitchell community in, a, in such a positive way and congratulate them on their state championship. Therefore, be it resolved that the City of Mitchell wishes to convey this very special recognition by way of this proclamation to the Mitchell High School 2024 Gymnastics team in honor of their accomplishments. Dated this first day of April, 2024, signed Bob Everson Mayor. I just want to thank all of you. Um, this is definitely an honor. It is great to be recognized. Um, it makes the girls realize how important they are to the community. And so when an event like this happens, um, I think it really just makes them stop and think why they're doing what they're doing every day all summer long. So thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> all right, boys basketball, if you'll come up here. <laughs> the, the screen went away. Yeah, it's because it turned off the one. Oh, okay. I, I'm right. getting people say they don't see it on TV. The TV's not. Pe people are saying it's not on TV. I got two text messages that said it's not on TV. It's on YouTube, is all I can tell you. Okay. It's up to Mitchell Telecom. So. You might have to make two rolls. All right, congratulations, gentlemen. Don't go too far. All right. Okay. Congratulations, guys. Good job on the state tournament in this season, Mr. Coach Reich. Reich. Reichsfeld. All right. Our proclamation, whereas the city of Mitchell believes student athletes are an important part of the Mitchell community, whereas under the leadership of head coach Riker Kreitzfeld, the 2024 boys basketball team went on a 17-game winning streak to finish the season with a 23-1 and record, and win the 2024 state championship title. Whereas this is the first state championship title since 2005 for the Mitchell Colonels and the 17th state championship title overall. Whereas the 2024 Mitchell Colonel Bas High School basketball team has also won its third consecutive ESD title in 2024. Whereas in addition to claiming the 2024 state AA championship title, the Mitchell Colonel boys team had three athletes named to the all-tournament team, Colton Smith, Gavin Sukup, and Marcus Talley, whereas the accomplishments of the athletes on this team are admired and respected by the Mitchell community and demonstrate the character that athletes at Mitchell High School possess. Whereas the City of Mitchell would like to recognize the 2024 Mitchell High School boys basketball team for representing the Mitchell community in such a positive way and congratulate them on their state championship. Therefore, be it resolved that the City of Mitchell wishes to convey this very special recognition by way of this proclamation to the Mitchell High School 2024 boys basketball team in honor of this accomplishment. Dated this first day of April, 2024, signed Bob Everson Mayor. Kevin. I'll just keep it. I'll keep it uh, real short. Uh, thank you for having us here. Uh, we appreciate you know taking the time to recognize these guys. Uh, thank you to the city of Mitchell. The support we had all year was unbelievable. Uh, probably the best crowds we've had in a decade or more. And in this time of the streaming and things like that, attendance has been going down and been going down because it's easier to watch online. But that hasn't been true here. Uh, in Mitchell, people show up. Uh, it makes a difference. It makes made a lot of memories for these kids throughout the year. State tournament attendance was unbelievable, so we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Can okay, I just that can I just say something? I just sure. want to say, you know, um, I'm emotional about this because you guys just have made your community so proud. Um, 
the girls, I mean, you guys have this, you guys have built this empire, and that's just so great that we have this team of girls who have, have just, you're a dynasty now in the state of South Dakota, and you're known for this. But I heard something when I was listening to the tournament. I didn't go in person, unfortunately, but I watched. I didn't miss a game. And I listened to, I remember when my kids were growing up, and Mitchell, I mean, we were at every state basketball tournament. We won them all the time. And I remember one of the announcers said a lot of you boys hadn't even been born the last time that Mitchell won a state championship. And for you to bring that home to your community, I can't even tell you how proud I am of you guys for your hard work. And I just want to applaud you again and say thank you so much for all that you've done to bring that home to us. Okay. Stephanie, do you have something? Yep. I was just going to respond to Kevin's comment. The YouTube stream is working, so if it's not on TV, it's something that they haven't grabbed the stream. So if you get any more texts, you can tell them to go to YouTube. Uh, if the TV is not working, our YouTube is streaming live. Okay, so it's something with Mitchell Telecom if you're not getting it on television. So, okay. Well, with that, we'll continue on with public commentary. Mr. Schrader, do you have some? I do, thank you. Um, I'd like to start out with a uh, watershed committee update. Um, we're, we're working on scheduling our first meeting um, the second or third week of April. Excuse me, Joe. If I, before these students leave, if I could say something. Uh, Terry Sabres here, and I was going to mention this anyway as a bit of positive news, but since all of the students are here, it's very fitting. Today it was announced that niche.com rated the Mitchell High School as the number one high school in the state of South Dakota. A very fitting. Good. The teachers, the students, and the sports ranked very high. And this is the same organization that rated the Mitchell Technical College as the number one technical college, or number one community college in South Dakota also a, a couple months ago. So, sorry, Joe. Okay, Joe Schrader, Public Works Director. I want to give a quick uh, watershed uh, update. Uh, so we're working on scheduling the first meeting for the watershed committee. I'm um, looking at the second or third week of April. Uh, we had 17 or 18 interested uh, people reach out. Um, so we're extending those invites to all of them for our first meeting just to have an introduction and, and see, see where that group is going to go. Um, secondly, um, I'd like to give a clarification from uh, the last lake meeting on March 19th. Um, there was a question at that meeting, uh, will the city have to fix retaining walls that are damaged when the lake is lowered? Um, the response to that question should have been, um, my, my response was, uh, the city will pay for them. And that is not accurate. Um, kind of in a, in a mis, mis, you know, weaved way. But uh, the rate of the drawdown will be controlled so that water pressure will equalize on the backside of retaining walls and decks as the water goes down. And that will be as designed by uh, bar engineering. Now this means that additional pressure behind walls and decks will not be an issue if done correctly by the contractor hired to do the work. If the contractor does not follow the correct drawdown procedure, the contractor would be held responsible for any retaining walls that push forward. It would be up to the city to facilitate ensuring the contractor awarded the project completes those repairs at the contractor's expense. Bar would complete a shoreline assessment prior to the drawdown starting. This would include completing observations, pictures, and complete a, structure as, a complete a structure assessment. Any structures that are in poor condition will be recorded and the property owner will be notified. This protects the city in the event that a retaining wall or deck is in such poor condition that it would have failed regardless. Thank you. Okay. Okay, anybody else wish to address council? Good evening, Council Mayor. My name is Stuart Hansen, and I'd like to talk a little bit about the Lake Mitchell Informational Meeting held at the Corum Palace on the 19th of March. First thing I'd like to say is that those wanting to watch it on the YouTube couldn't hear it because the sound was terrible. I'm not sure what the deal was, but I'm sure most of them didn't get any information from it. It was finally nice to hear some of the truths about Firestill Creek, things I've said at previous council meetings. Someone on the panel finally admitted that fire engineering said it would cost $53 million to eliminate only 50% of the phosphorus in the creek. 
which they also said it wouldn't be feasible. Professor Paula Mazur from DW even said, and I quote, anything we do in the watershed, it's going to be incremental. It's going to be a small improvement. So why did our mayor say that the Kelly wetland would greatly reduce the source of phosphorus flowing into the lake from the creek? Or drastically reduce, or said we'd be getting a good foothold on the water coming into the lake? At least now we know the truth. Too bad he won't put that fire engineering or what Professor Mazur said out on his from the desk of the mayor page. So mayor, why do you feel it's necessary to lie to the voters in order to get to sway their votes on approving the loan for dredging. Why can't you just be honest, give the voters all the correct information so they can make their own informed decision? Isn't that your job? I'd like to thank Joe Schroeder, the city engineer, and Stephanie Elwine, the city administrator, for answering a few of the questions I had about the loan application and the dredging project. My hope is that the vote to approve the loan application gets defeated, a new mayor gets voted in, a mayor that will truly try to work with everyone in the community, not just the good old boys. Then maybe people can sit down and figure out a way to get the slate cleaned up that won't have our kids and our grandkids paying back a loan plus interest for the next 30 years. And one last thing I would like to say is I would just wish everyone would be honest when they're talking about the dredging project. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wish to address council? Uh, good evening. I'm Tona Rosam. I'm an old council member, so I'm here tonight kind of on a couple of, like, from a couple different levels. First off, I want to commend the council and the mayor because I think you guys have just done yeoman's duty in years of studying this. And I know how tedious that process is. You put in a lot of time, you've looked at all the angles. Um, thank you for that and for the two new guys. I know it was a steep learning curve all of a sudden, but thank you for, for that as well. Um, I've been in on or around the lake for in excess of 70 years. I've lived on it um, 44 years, I guess, so I've watched a lot of what's gone on out there. When I was on council in 84 to 95, there's some things I think it's important to know. On the north side of the lake, we, in 76, we put in uh, city sewer, but those homes over there had to pump uphill. Well, we ended up with a lot of trouble. There were septic pump, um, tanks that were being used. We got that rectified. We had um, a storm sewer dumping into the lake across from the garage. Uh, up at the corner of where Vernite is now. And that had sanitary sewer running through a uh, storm sewer that was coming from dumping from um, Super City Mall. It was an error. We got that rectified. But I think the straw that broke the camel's back, and we're, we're saying all this is coming from upstream. I'm not buying that completely. We had to drink the water. So we had to pump from the Jim River. It was so dry you could walk across Kippis Bay with the exception of a little uh, channel in the middle. You could walk across way out in front of my house. We had to pump from the gym and we were pumping sludge. And, when, and when, you, when you fired up the pump, you couldn't do it for two weeks. I mean, it was really expensive. So you're stuck with it for a couple of months. Well, the gym was running pretty dry too. So the crap sorry, that we pumped in was about a third of our water by the time that was finished. And living there, you could see a noted difference after that. And I really think that was one of the straws that broke the camel's back. So what we all know we got to get rid of the phosphates. You know that. You've studied it. We know that once we do, we have to somehow be able to reduce the phosphates. And in my mind, it's like having diabetes. You can't just take insulin for two years and think your blood, the sugar in your blood is going to be gone forever. It's not. Same way here. We're going to have to reduce the phosphates. We're going to have to stay ahead of it. We're going to have to manage it. So thank you. I hope that we can be positive going forward as we talk to our voters. We kicked the can down the road for 40 years. We started it when I was there. I think it's time to move forward and stop keep kicking the can. So appreciate all you do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else wish to address the council? Okay, Board of Adjustment, entertain a motion for City Council to recess the Board of Adjustment. So moved. Motion by Mr. Charks. Second. Second by Mr. Barrington. Further discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried. 
Hearing an action on the application of Erica Hennessy conditional use permit postponed from 31824. Erica Hennessy has applied for conditional use permit to operate an educational institution located at 1325 Palmer Place, legally described as Lot 5 and West 3 feet of Lot 4, Block 8, Garden View Addition, City of Mitchell Davis County, South Dakota, said property is zoned R2, single family. Mr. Janigas. Mr. Mayor and Council, um, Planning Commission recommended approval of this um, with the three conditions that are usually put on for a daycare. Um, it was four, zero with three absent. Um, notices were sent out to neighbors, published in the paper, uh, signed, posted. There were four letters returned in favor of this. Uh, Erica's ran a daycare for many years. Um, as you recall, in 23, she came in to get a child care, preschool, and nursery uh, conditional use because she was no longer living at the place where she was doing her daycare. Um, since then, she has uh, wanted to begin homeschooling her kids, some family's kids, and some other um, people that have reached out to her as well. State uh, allows her to do up to 22 kids um, over the age of three. Um, She's not here this evening, but I can answer any questions that you may have for me as well. Well, that was my question was what kind of an education um, institution it was talking about. So she'll have 23 students and are we have are the neighbors okay with the drop off? And obviously they are, but are they aware of yep, the they, number of kids? That they've will be all there? been aware of that as well. Yep, up to 22 students is, is how okay. many they can have. Okay. I did have a question with this be in addition to the daycare or would this replace the daycare this would replace the daycare okay motion by mr mccardle okay. say by mr savers further discussion anybody in the audience wish to address this hello good evening uh jesse strout here um I do have a quick question or I guess a suggestion that um, uh, in this case, uh, I guess it's replacing, so that does help. Um, it's replacing something where she's already got a variance Condition and I guess conditional use. Condition use. Right. Um, whatever fees, considering that she's investing into the community and investing into children and education, um, I would suggest that you w uh, waive those fees and give her money back for that because that's a really good, you know, that's going to help her out buy some crayons and stuff, you know? Um, that's my suggestion. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else have a comment? Okay, there's a motion to approve. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Action to set the date for Board of Adjustment hearing 4-15-24. Lori Schultz has applied for a variance permit for a front yard setback of 15 feet versus 25 feet to build a 17-foot by 19-foot uh, front porch. Located at 714 East 1st Avenue, legally described as Lot 11, Block 21, FM Greens Edition, City of Mitchell, Davis County, South Dakota, said property zone R2, single family. Set the date. Motion by Mr. Charks. Second. Second by Mr. Goldhammer. Further discussion? Anybody in the audience wish to address this? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Action to set the date for Board of Adjustment hearing. 41524, Lynn Ekman has applied for variance permit for a side yard corner setback of 8 feet versus 20 feet to place a 12 foot by 20 foot garage shed located at 1528 Pebble Beach Road, legally described as Lot 29, Block 4, Lakeview, First Edition, City of Mitchell, Davis County, South Dakota, set property zoned R2, single family. Motion by Mrs. Charks. Second by Mr. Barrington. Further discussion? Anybody in the eyes wish to address it? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Entertain a motion for Board of Adjustment to adjourn City Council reconvene regular session. So moved. Right. Yep, motion by Mr. Goldhammer, second by Mr. McArdle. Discussion. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Here in action on the following application, uh, excuse me, following alcohol license applications. On the application of the Corn Pal Shrine Club for a special event liquor license located at the Masonic Temple for April 20th, 2024 for a wedding. Mr. Coster, any issues? Mayor and Council, we have no objections. Recommend approval. Motion approved. Motion by Mr. Sabres. Second. Second by Mr. Smith. Discussion? Anybody in the audience wish to address this one? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried. 
On the application of the Corn Pell Shrine Club for a special event liquor license located in the Masonic Temple for May 10th, 2024 for a wedding. Mr. Coster. Again, we recommend approval. No concerns. Motion by Mr. McArdle, second by Mr. Barrington. Discussion? Anybody in the audience wish to address this? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carried. Action to approve special event permit Mitchell Main Street and beyond first Fridays on Monday, May through September. Motion approved. Right. Motion by Mr. Savers. Second by Mrs. Charks. Discussion. Mitchell Main Street, you want to come and tell us what you're doing? Your free advertising. <laughs> Hi, I am Elizabeth with Mitchell Mainstream Beyond. I am their events manager. We are very excited. We are kicking off this first Fridays on Main already within the next month on May 3rd. How crazy is that? With that being said, I'm actually requesting to amend my May 3rd first Fridays map to be bigger. I do have um, maps here, but I'm asking to include the 5th and Main parking lot as it's pulled up here and that alley that runs from 5th, East 5th Ave to the plaza parking lot where the food trucks would be. We have been reached out to by the emergency management systems and the police department. They want to host a huge bike rodeo and it requires a bigger space, which is exciting. And Officer Van Horn is also here to represent if there's any questions with what that means to the community. But it's going to be touch a truck, bike rodeo. We have our first Friday stuff going on too. We're bringing in pedal pole, kid pedal poles, inflatables. We got bands booked for the whole summer. Food trucks are booked, and we got vendors that are excited for this too. So I would ask that we can have first Fridays be bigger for May third to have a bigger space. So you're asking to amend the closure for May third and only May third for May right now. I'll move approval with the amendment. Okay, you're, so Mrs. Charks is a, moving to amend it to create, yes. include Fifth Avenue what parking for May 3rd. Yes. A second by Mr. Barrington. Okay, further discussion. Appreciate Anything it. else you want to bring up about it? Um, You've also asked for waiving of your fees, correct? Correct. Um, we did send that. If you guys have any question about that, we asked for the one-time payment of $500 for all of our special event permits. We did have that last year, and we are requesting that again for the 2024 fiscal year. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay. Uh, I just want to take this opportunity to say kudos to Mitchell Main Street and Beyond for making this um, become a don't-miss event. Um, I feel like every year it's bigger and it's better and the crowds grow larger. And so congratulations on that. Um, and I'm looking forward to another fun summer. You guys always um, done such great things. So this is going to be great. Yeah. Appreciate that. It takes a lot. It's not just us. We have the whole community that comes together to put this on. So if you're one of the volunteers or people that come make this possible, thank you. Yeah. I'm going to definitely support this, but I want a suggestion maybe for next year. Um, when we go through our budget for the subsidies, I would like to see the, the fees included into that amount. So that way, uh, we don't have the park and record, whoever that has to dig into their budget and, and have to supplement, uh, for this, which, which again is a great, uh, I'm totally for it. Uh, but you know, then the next nonprofit that comes up and says, you know, can we waive the fees and we got to be a little bit consistent. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know if you've got any comments on that or not, Mayor. And well, it does. I think uh, it impacts the park and rec by roughly ten thousand dollars with their rentals and whatnot. So, um, what we'd like you understand what we'd like. Correct. And the total amount for this year, I have that. It was also in the packets, and we can discuss. But, okay. Mr. Uh, so, like Mayor when you correct. bring a subsidy forward next year, include uh, the breakdown. Yeah, the breakdown of what Absolutely. you're what you're asking for when you waive your fees. Okay. Will do. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Does that work for everybody? Okay, so vote first on the amendment. I'm, is that right? Okay, so we have an amendment to include the Fifth Avenue parking lot. Anybody else wish to address this in the audience? Uh, when is that the closure time? Oh, Sorry. I do apologize. Yes, in the amendment that Aaron that we sent, we are also requesting that that Fifth and Main be closed at noon that day so that his team has enough time to set up the parking lot and also have the road closed at three instead of four that day so that we can get all the emergency equipment parked in the correct manner because they have to be able to exit correctly. So it takes a little bit more time to maneuver and park them. 
Yeah. I do apologize. Is there any issues? It wasn't with, on the. It was on the attachment. Yeah. Is there any issues with your amendments? You two that made the. No. No. Okay. Just want to make sure. Yeah. Susan and Marty. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay. Looks like you're good. Okay. Thank All you. right. Thank you, guys. I'm, I know where the next three items. So. All those in favor of the amendment to add uh, the, on May third, add the fifth of Main parking lot, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carried. Okay. The original. Uh, approval of the special event applications. Does anybody need want to speak to that in the audience? Okay. All those in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carries. Action to approve special event permit Mr. Main Street beyond Memorial Weekend for Saturday, May 25th. Yeah, you're pretty busy, Mr. Luzak. <laughs> it's a street closure, parking lot closure, noise permit. Special event liquor license and consumption permit. Motion approved. Motion by Mr. Savers. Second. Same by Mr. Smith. This is Lutzak. You want to come up? Tell us about it again. Yes, sir. Um, once again, uh, I'm Elizabeth with Mitchell Mainstream Beyond. We also have represent representation from the two gentlemen hiding out. If you want to raise your hands, the guys that have been doing this for 20 plus years. Yeah, they're in the crowd. This all started with them. Mitchell Main Street Beyond was approached to take this over last year. It was our first year hosting it. We brought the ribs back, and it was a huge success. And we uh, were able to donate $8,000 towards ROCKS, our Rural Office of Community Service. They are going to be coming forward again and bringing that to that. They're going to bring it. So we are bringing it just as much. So it's going to be packed full with car show, pedal pull, music, ribs, of course, and fun for all ages. Uh, we do understand that there is going to be some, some construction happening at 3rd and Main during this time period, but we have planned for that, and we will work around that. Um, I am open for any questions, or I have the experts that have been doing it for, I believe, 23 years are also in the room. Okay. Any questions? I'm just going to comment one more time. Sorry about that. But um, I think it's wonderful that you, this is a perfect example of what Mitchell Main Street and Beyond does, is that you raise money and then you give it to um, groups in the community, which I commend you for that. I just think that that's really not worthy. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Okay. We have a motion to second. Anybody in the audience wish to address it? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carried. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm going to abstain from that. You're going to abstain? Okay. Yeah. One abstention. So when I win... There's no <laughs> confidence is a big thing, Mr. Goldhammer. <laughs> yeah, action to approve special event permit application Mitchell Main Street beyond Oktoberfest and Outcast Car Show on September Saturday, September twenty first. <laughs> Street closure, parking lot closure, noise permit, special event liquor license and consumption permit. Motion by Mr. McCardle. Second by Mr. Bathke. Further discussion. You want to speak again? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, you guys will just for, stay there. I, oh, I don't want to be disrespectful. Um, so with that being said. You'd be the uh, first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Elizabeth with Mitchell Mainstream Beyond for those who are watching. Uh, this event, Oktoberfest, it's fun. It's a German theme. There's wiener dog races. It's, it's going to be really big this year. We are partnering with the Outcast Car Show. We have a few gentlemen in the audience. I'm sure if you guys want to come up and talk that, they'd be thrilled to have you up here. They are also a huge part of this because they're keeping that Outcast Car Show alive, and it's their 20th year anniversary this year. So we are throwing one big bash, and this one is going to run all the way from 7th to the depot, and it's going to be filled with cars and activities and music, and it's just going to be really cool for Mitchell. That's awesome. I have. Gentlemen, you want to come up and talk about the car show? Why not? It's your opportunity. <laughs> How you guys doing? Good. Uh, I'm Steve Bren, president of 301 Rods. I've seen you guys here every year. And uh, this year, we are opening up all, all makes and models. We thought for the, being the 20th year, there's so many new hot rods out there that are made that a lot of people own, and we just want to see how many cars we can... I remember just moving here in 04, and you could barely walk down Main Street. There were so many cars at the, at the older shows. So we're trying to get that back. And then partnering with Mitchell Main Street and beyond with 
all that commotion going on, it's going to be a great event for the community. And it'll just give so many people different things to do, look at. We got some really cool vendors. We're getting a, a, a shirt vendor out of uh, Tyndall, South Dakota. He uh, makes mechanic shirts, any size you can think of, from 7X down to small. And they're $15 a piece, and they're all custom made. And he, we got rained out last year. You guys remember that? And just yep. rain everywhere. And we still, he sold like 200 shirts. And we had 60 cars. <laughs> so, I mean, we just want to get all these vendors, and we want Mitchell to be the one car show place that everybody remembers. And I'm trying to get, to get some signage done this year, too, a little bit more on the interstate. So when people drive by, they have a reminder that that's coming up. But we appreciate everything. The city helps us get this all set up, letting us do it on the street. And uh, look forward to this year. Awesome. No well, rain. <laughs> we can't. We can't guarantee that. But we're looking forward to it. Okay. Thanks, Thank you. Anything else from anybody? Anybody else in the audience wish to address this? Okay. All those in favor of the most signified by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carried. Action to approve special event permit application, Mitchell Main Street Beyond Parade of Lights on Tuesday, December third, twenty twenty four. That's why it snowed today, Mrs. Luzak. <laughs> you wanted to have your Christmas party. Street closure, parking lot closure, parade permit, noise permit. Move to approve. Motion by Mr. Goldhammer. Same by Mr. Barrington. Discussion? Mrs. Lutzak, your turn. Uh, once again, Elizabeth Luzak with Mitchell Mainstream and Beyond. Yep, we're already planning Christmas. We're already into 2025 for those who are planning their next year. We're already there for you guys. So we are going to be voting on the theme this upcoming month. So we'll even have the theme out there so you can plan your heart out through the whole summer. And we hit a new record last year of how many floats we had, which was 56. And we hope to keep that continuing. And we're also involving Main Street with this event. We're doing a... a Christmas on Main Street window art contest and the parks are potentially going to be decorated this year. There's a lot of things happening behind the scenes with a lot of different organizations to make this bigger and better and keep growing Mitchell's quality of life through our events. So we're excited. Awesome. Any questions for her? Yeah. Anything you want to bring up? Anybody in the audience wish to address this? All those in favor of the most signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carried. Action in a Action to approve special permit application for Heart and Soul Cancer Walk on Friday, June 14th, 2024. That is street closure, parking lot closure, noise permit. I believe this is Hitchcock Park, is it not? Anybody here to speak to this one? Hi, I'm Darcy Sabers. I'm the president of the Heart and Soul Cancer Walk. Uh, this is our 27th annual event. This will be our fourth year at the park. Since moving to the park, the attendance for the event has probably tripled. Um, the atmosphere there is just so much more family friendly. Um, the city council was gracious enough to have donated the park facilities to us in the past. We would love for that to happen again. We invite everyone to come out and attend, see what all of it is about. Um, this is my 11th year on this committee, so we have seen kind of a f just a big increase in everything and in the applications that we have and the money that's needed in our community. All of our money that's raised that night stays local. We have a 30-mile radius of Mitchell that we support for anyone that's going through any kind of cancer treatment. So last year, we had over $100,000 given back to our community uh, within the current treasurer, Terry Torgerson's records were 12 years worth, and he said we have over a million dollars that we've given back to the community. So all of that has stayed local. Nothing has gone out of town. So other than the small communities, which still doctor here and still grocery here and gas here. So uh, the applications are never ending. They come in every month. They get approved every month. So we'd like to do anything we can to keep that event big and keep the money coming in so that we can keep the support going. Yeah. Pretty much everything you're doing is in Hitchcock Park, right? Yep. From the band shell over to the kitchen area, and then the walk that they do is from that road that cuts the middle. Um, their wow. luminary display is now in the middle of the road, and it cuts it in half, so they go up one side and down the other. Okay. So, Very good. Entertain a motion. Have you um, chosen your honorary... Co-chairs. Co-chairs. Yes. Um, yeah. do you want to, can you tell us? Um, Dina Vanderwilt and um, the Amy to Lamb family, um, her brothers and her, and then it was Denny Kiner, but now he has a conflict, so he has to back out for this year. So he'll be on the docket for next year, so. Yeah. 
Move to approve. Motion by Mr. Goldhammer. Second by Mrs. Charks. Further discussion? Thank you. Thank you. Anybody in the United States address this? Okay. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carried. Action to approve Palace City Pre Sturgis 2024 license for limited use of City of Mitchell intellectual property assets agreement with the window shop. Mr. Johnson. All right. Well, I'm pinch hitting for Aaron tonight. Um, I know that he received a request uh, from the window shop to use the Pre Sturgis logo and do some promotional items that they would be able to give out at the pre Sturgis party this year. So this license form is just something that the city has had in place for a number of years now. Um, it doesn't get used a lot. It's just, you know, specifically when there's an event going on, we can allow certain individuals to use that logo because it does incorporate the elements of our trademark Corn Palace logo. Uh, we want to be licensing the use of this particular logo as well. Um, I guess with that, I can open it up for any questions. Would there be any further approval of what the actual logo goes on to or how it is used? Or is this like a general approval that they could kind of have carte blanche with? The request was received for a specific item. They were going to put it on a t-shirt. I believe it's going to be a dated t-shirt to give away at the event. So I think it's tailored to that event this year for that purpose. It won't hurt to have the additional advertising out there either. Yeah. Moved to approve. Okay, motion by Mr. Goldhammer. Second. Second by Mr. Sabers. Further discussion? Anybody in the audience wish to address this? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carried. Action to award bid for Marine Improvements Phase 1, Phase 2, Project 2023-3, EDA number 0579-06173. Mr. Schrader. Yep, Mr. Mayor, Council. Uh, bids were opened on March 12th in City Hall Council Chambers at 1.30 p.m. The, the bid schedules were bid as follows. So bid schedule one was our base bid, and that was a for our sidewalk portion of the project, approximately... Uh, 6,140 feet of eight foot wide bike path. Bid schedule two was an option to build the jetty, uh, one with the lake being full and one with the lake being drawn down. Uh, bid schedule three, um, the base bid was for the south portion of the docks. Alternate one was for the westmost portion of the docks and alternate two uh, was for the uh, northmost portion of the docks. We received uh, four bids, with the low bid being from Sukup Construction out of Sioux Falls. Um, the bid award for that would be uh, bid schedule one, base bid, bid schedule two, option 2A, with uh, the lake being full. So um, the bid alternate for the lake being full was less expensive than the lake being drawn down. Uh, bid schedule three, uh, base bid, and both alternates for a total value of $2,667,995.66. Eric Prunny uh, with Bros Engineering, uh, who was engineer record for the project, um, has reviewed all submitted bid information and recommends awarding the project to Sukup uh, for the bid as I just described. Um, he did provide a letter recommending that bid. Um, and staff also recommends uh, awarding the bid to Sukup Construction contingent on EDA approval. Uh, so like I said again, that would be the base bid with the 6,140 feet of bike path, um, the jetty with the lake being full, so that means that it will be built out of riprap, and then um, the full dock proposal. Our current pro project budget was $2.5 million with a $1 million EDA grant I am requesting an additional 550,000 uh, in the 2025 budget um, to supplement our construction uh, professional engineering services, as well as give us uh, roughly a 5% contingency for the project. Um, so, with so with this bid, that means that we can uh, build the project with the lake being full or empty. Um, the contractor does plan to start in November, uh, so that means that. 
regardless of how the lake project turns out, there will be water in the lake at that time. Um, and with that, I can answer any questions you may have. Were you surprised that it was uh, less expensive to do it with a lake with water in it? I was. Um, and asking that question of why, um, there is a little bit of uncertainty with the lake bottom, you know, not being able to see it um, and bringing in that extra dirt material and what you're compacting on. Whereas riprap, you start dumping and it firms itself up as you're going along. Um, so regardless of whether there's water in the lake or not, you can construct it with the riprap. And it also helps, I'm guessing their timeline too also had something to do with it because they're now able to start in November. Um, so I'm guessing they had a window in their construction season uh, where they could move forward with the project. Nice. Well, then I will move approval of the bid from Sukup Construction. Okay, motion by Mrs. Chark. all of the alternates. And option 2B. Contingent right? on EDA approval. Oh, yeah. 2A. I mean, contingent on what? EDA approval. Right. Oh, contingent on EDA approval. Okay, we have a motion. Second. Second by Mr. Barrington. Discussion. Anybody nice wish to address this? Come on up, Mr. Simpson. Uh, thank you, Mayor and members of the City Council. Name, my name is Steve Simpson. I uh, became aware of this by reading the paper this morning. I saw that there was a $1 million uh, federal grant for economic development, so I was looking online on the agenda for tonight if there was some financial analysis to show that it, we will pay back this $2.6 million one way or another, and, and if so, how long would it take? Um, what I did uh, find the uh, the project number with the uh, EDA, and I found a letter dated July 12, 2022, to the mayor, and it was from Angela Martinez with uh, the Economic Development Administration out of Denver region, and it says EDA's mission is to lead the federal economic de development agenda by promoting innovation and competitiveness, preparing American regions for growth and success in the worldwide economy. Um, I've been doing some research on, on what's been going on since the 1970s, and regional government, we're, we're part of Region 8 out of Denver. Denver's the capital for five states in our region, uh, North Dakota, uh, Montana, Wyoming, and Utah comprise Region 8, and there's 10 regions. That was uh, created by uh, President Nixon in 1972 with an executive order. So it was not voted on by our legislative branch. So the problem that, that we're seeing is regionalism and non-law governance are destroying the United States. And it's doing that by taking away our, our constitutional process and, and replacing it with administrative process. Uh, so I just want to say that in passing. And specific to this project, uh, I also found a technical assistance agreement with uh, planning and development for District 3 uh, regarding this project. And the responsibility of District 3, again, that was set up in 1972 by Governor Frank Farrar with the executive order. He created six planning districts in South Dakota. So we got this regional government thing going on with the federal with 10 and South Dakota with six, and we're part of District 3. With regard to this specific project, it, the, the agreement uh, responsibilities for the district is to set up a, a project administration files and catalog associated documents. And I saw none of that in, in the uh, agenda attachments that we have here. I would, I would, would like to have seen that. What are the requirements of this project and what work has this uh, District 3 done? Uh, and then the city's responsibility is to comply with all grant award conditions. And I didn't see the grant itself in the documentation, so I don't know what all those requirements are. So at this point in time, I can't say I'm for or against this project. I think there's more information that we should have on the table and, and make sure that we're doing something that's responsible because it's using federal money and, and a lot of our own money. Um, and I also understand that 
if we do uh, go forward with this, uh, District 3 will get $25,000 from the city of Mitchell to pay for their services. Uh, stand by for any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Mr. Schrader, can you get him a copy of that grant? Yep, you bet. We did approve the, the grant at, uh, it would have been August 15th, 2022 meeting. Um, so yeah, I, and I can, I can email you that information. I can, okay. If you're gonna hold tight, I can get your information in the back. Yeah. Is there, is there any sort of uh, financial analysis as to what the profit per year will be for this project? my knowledge um, we do have revenue that's going to be generated from the boat slips right um, as far as what it will bring into uh, Mitchell as far as tax dollars or sales tax spent um, I do not have those numbers okay. readily available just so sort of everybody understands I, I'm a retired accountant I've been spent 35 years a lot of it is in capital budgeting from projects like this and we want to make sure that the, 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 the expe expectation of the profits was greater than what we're putting into this project. That's why I came here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, good evening, Council Mayor. My name is Stuart Hansen, and I'd just like to say that a while back I stated at a council meeting that on average 80% or more of the people surveyed said they wouldn't use or rent the public boat docks or mooring space the city is going to build at the west end of the lake. Everything I just stated is true and is located on the city's website under Lake Mitchell Master. How many Plan. people were surveyed, Mr. Hansen? I have no idea. It's on the lake. It's on the city. 694. I'm just saying, twenty percent of those gives you far more people than we have both. I'm not interested. So there is you, a so demand. Could you just let me go, please? You Thank you. Go ahead. Everything I just stated is true and located on the city's website under Lake Mitchell Master Plan, pages 33, 34, 35. If you look at page 32, which I've handed out, the survey asks, "What recreation amenities would you like to see on Lake Mitchell?" Boat dock rentals fish finished second to last at 4.9 percent. Boat mooring rental finished last at 3.12 percent. How do you explain that to the taxpayers? So as you can see, I'm just trying to be honest as I can with the information I'm presenting. I just wish everyone else would do the same. I guess some people think I'm being negative, but I've always told the truth. But when I hear people being not so truthful, it's very frustrating. Thank you. Okay, once more, Mr. Hanson, how many people were surveyed? I have no idea. There were 600, 694, which means of the 60 boat slips, we will have plenty of... That's fine. I'm plenty. not okay. saying... All right. So that, there, there is a demand there. So. I'm not saying there isn't. I'm All just right. showing you the information so. that I stated. Uh, no, you're stating, it, you're stating it to try and slant it as negative, but that's okay. That's, that's yours. Thank you. Thank you. Have a seat. Uh, I would just like to point out that on the document that he handed out, the, if you remove cleaning the lake water, which is priority number one and number two of those surveyed, uh, marina with supplies is in the top five, and I would consider this project as a part of that contingency plan as well. Or I would put that, by the definition, in the survey into this project as well. So Correct. Ultimately, there would be a marina associated with this. At least that's the plan. So, okay. Anybody else have a question, comment? Could I add to it, Mayor? Sure. Kevin Nelson, Park and Rec Director, I have the same survey in front of me. 25.22% said they'd be willing to rent a slip of that that comes to 174 people. 11.57% said they would pay $200 a month, that's 78 people for that space. 97 people said they'd pay for a mooring space that's just tied up to a, a buoy at $100 a month. That would be acceptable to them. So. If we end up with 78 people for 66 slips, I think we got a pretty good percentage out there. And of that, again, in the survey, 174 people said that they'd be willing to rent a slip. But that price tag of 200 was a little bit excessive for some of them. We haven't set a price at all for what that would be. True. Okay. Yeah. And that was. You had your chance. Sit down. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else in the audience wish to address this? Okay, we have a motion and a second. I'll, let's do this roll call, please. Do 
Dozier. <coughs> McCardle. Aye. Barrington. Aye. Bathke. Aye. Charks. Aye. Smith. Aye. Sabres. Aye. Goldhammer. Aye. Motion carries. Action to award bid for Rock Chips Project 2024-10. Mr. Schrader. Yep, Mr. Mayor Council. Uh, bids were open on March 20th at 1.30 p.m. in City Hall Council Chambers. One bid was received by Spencer Corey's. Uh, the unit price was $17.60 for a total price of $44,000. Uh, the unit price from 2023 was $14, so it is up a little bit this year. Uh, the bid tab is attached for your information. Staff does recommend approving uh, the rock chip bid to Spencer Corey's. And I, I do provide a overall budget for our chip seal project that shows we are under budget by approximately $4,000. And I do uh, recommend approval. Okay. Motion to approve. Motion by Mr. Smith. Second. Second by Mrs. Charks. Further discussion? Anybody in the audience wish to address it? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Action to award bid for Petroleum Products Project 2024-13. Mr. Schrader. Yep, Mr. Mayor, Council. Uh, these bids were also open on March 20th at 1.30 p.m. here in Council Chambers. Uh, one bid was received by Jebro, Inc. Um, item number one is our CS2P emulsion. That is our TAC for our rock. A total cost of $260,069.80. Item two uh, was our fog seal. Um, total cost of $78,846.65. Uh, for a combined total cost of $338,916.45. Uh, the bid tabulation is attached for your information. Um, prices are up just slightly from last year, but not terrible. Uh, we do recommend approval of the bid to Jebro. I can answer any questions you may have. Motion by Mr. McCardle. Second. Said by Mr. Sabres. Discussion? Anybody in the audience wish to address this? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Action to approve request for three new street lights on Sam Street, north of Maui Drive. Mr. Schrader. Yep, Mr. Mayor, Council. Um, there has been a request for three new street lights on Sam Street, north of Maui. Um, these street lights are installed free of charge to the city of Mitchell. Uh, it will be a wood pole um, and is installed by Northwestern Energy. A fee of $15.99 per month will be charged. And staff does recommend approval. The layout is shown on the screen. We do, they're laid out roughly 350 to 360 feet apart, which is our typical uh, block length. So when we do a new street, poles don't automatically go up? We do it by request. Once the citizens request, then we will bring them to council for approval to be installed. Okay. Okay. Motion, approved. Motion by Mr. Savers. Second. by Mr. McCardle. Discussion? Anybody wish, in the audience wish to address this? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Item 21 has been withdrawn. Action to agree. Uh, excuse me, action to agree to renew Corn Powell Service Agreement for the 2025 summer season. Ms. Elwine. Mayor and Council, included in the packet is Agreement 2023-46. This is the Corn Palace Service Agreement between the City of Mitchell and the Mitchell Area Chamber of Commerce that was approved on August 21st, 2023. This agreement is what we used that allows the Chamber to operate a gift shop, souvenir, novelty business, on the main floor of the Corn Palace during the summer months. In section five of that agreement, we, uh, we wanted to build in a renewal process during the initial term of the contract. And that section five says that the city and chamber have to agree before May 1st, 2024, if, they're, if we're gonna allow them to continue for the 2025 summer season. Uh, we Discuss this internally, and it, we need council to make that decision. So the item on the agenda today is just requesting that council consider renewing for the 2025 summer season. Uh, the renewal rate is already spelled out in the agreement. It's the 2024 rental rate plus the CPIU for 2025. Um, that's also shown in Section 5 of the agreement. 
I can certainly answer any questions. Council should be very familiar with this contract. We spent a lot of time in negotiations on this last year. But I can answer any questions that you may have. So this just be a one year lease, wouldn't it? Just for one year? Well, if you look at that agreement initially, I'll pull that up here. Hold on. I think it's three years. Have it, year. It's one year extensions, but it, it, the initial agreement, I believe, goes through 2020. Excuse me. 2026 that we can renew it annually. And then after that, we have another one. Let me look here. Okay, right here is where the terms are laid out. <coughs> so we extend it by one year through 2026, summer season. Okay. Move to approve. Motion by Mrs. Charks. Second by Mr. Smith. Further discussion? Anybody in the audience wish to address this? <coughs> Good evening again, Jesse Stroud. Um, I did review this service agreement and I just want to point out, um, and I think you guys should maybe take a moment to re-review this, that you do have um, where they're, they're, they're making a payment, but I have an issue in section one where it says they will use a portion of the profits earned by it, which would be, I'm assuming, the souvenir gift shop, from the operation of the gift shop business to promote and market the Corn Palace, but that does not have a specific metric. It just says they're gonna do something and they could do $1 and it would qualify. I know that the chamber does some great things for the city and the Corn Palace and marketing it, but I don't think we have a way to uh, measure the return on investment. Um, unfortunately, it's just whatever. Um, I think that's really important that um, when we're subsidizing and doing things like that with these organizations, that we find a way to make sure that we're getting a return for that investment. Um, and in this case, it's, it, it says basically I don't have to do anything other than maybe a dollar. Anyway, that's all I had. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Anybody else wish to address this? As a general feeling, I will be voting no on this again, not because it's a reflection on the chamber or the hard work they do, but at the purpose of having a gift shop on the Corn Palace floor throughout the entirety of the summer, that I disagree with that purpose of the Corn Palace, um, but it has no reflection on what they're doing or their capability of running the gift shop well. Uh, stopped in multiple times to buy, buy some very corny gifts last summer. So, yeah. Other comments? <clears throat> Okay, let's roll call this then, please. Bathke? Aye. Barrington? Aye. McCardle? Aye. Dosher? Aye. Goldhammer? Nay. Sabres? Aye. Charks? Aye. Smith? Aye. Okay, motion carries. Action to approve permanent easement with Francis M. Smith Revocable Living Trust in relation to 540 North Harmon Drive. Mr. Schrader, are you going to start this? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Council, um, this easement provides two separate accesses across a city-owned piece of property, uh, 540 North Harmon. Uh, there is a figure attached uh, for your reference. The easement obligates the grantee to maintain the easement areas at no cost to the city. The city reserves the right to make further roadway, sidewalk, and utility improvements in the easement area if needed. It's basically, it's just providing access across our property to the road. It was discovered during a title search. Just some housekeeping. Okay. Mr. Johnson, you got anything to add? Okay. Move to approve. Motion by Mrs. Charks. Second by Mr. McCardle. Further discussion? Anybody in the audience wish to address this? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carried. Grant with the city of Mount Grant the city of Mount Vernon permission to haul sanitary waste to the Mitchell landfill. Mr. Schrader. Yep, Mr. Mayor, Council. Uh, the city of Mount Vernon has requested permission to haul trash to the Mitchell Sanitary Landfill. The request is inside the landfill's jurisdiction. Uh, they will be charged forty-five dollars per ton plus the three dollar per ton fees for a total of forty-eight. Uh, staff does recommend approval. 
Joe, how does that relate to our fees to city residents and or city businesses in Mitchell? So our people that haul to the landfill are charged this amount. Okay. Um, our, our fees within town, I believe we charge $12 uh, per month uh, to do that. So basically we charge our, our, our wholesale, if you want to look at it that way, and then it's up to the city of Mount Vernon to charge accordingly to make up their difference. So it'd be the same thing that we charge, say, Medema. Do they have a private contractor that comes in, picks it up, Joe, or do they have their own? So right now they do have a, a private hauler. Um, they're they're looking at the potential to um, start their own collection. Oh, they are? Okay. We've purchased a garbage <laughs> truck, Mayor Weston Frank. Um, we've had trouble. There's a limited uh, amount of people that provide services to that part. Um, Petra closed. Uh, right now we only have had one uh, contractor in the area. We've had some issues. Um, I suppose you guys are familiar with when your residents complain enough that you got to do something about it. So we've purchased a garbage truck. So I thought if we're going to be the dog catcher and, uh, you know, the peacemaker and the mayor, I might as well try to be the garbage guy too. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> that sounds like a country song. Move to approve. Motion by Mr. Goldhammer. Say it by Mr. Savers. Further discussion? Anybody in the eye switch to address this? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay? Motion carried. Thank you, Mayor Franks. Action to approve of agreement A-2024-13, Mitchell Water Distribution System Model Support with AE2S. Mr. Schrader. Yep, Mr. Mayor Council. Uh, this is a continuing services agreement with AE2S for our water modeling. Uh, they developed our water model in 2019. Uh, we do this for various uh, different projects as we're looking at, say, future projects or developments within town just to verify that uh, our system can handle those improvements. Uh, so with that, I would ask you that uh, you approve this continuing services agreement with AE2S uh, for a cost not to exceed 10000 Move to approve. Motion by Mr. Goldhammer. And my Mrs. Charks, further discussion? Anybody in the eyes wish to address this? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Hearing in action uh, to approve agreement A-2024-14, real estate purchase agreement, kind of property, Mr. Schrader. Yep, Mr. Mayor, Council. Um, this is uh, the start of a hearing uh, for the city of Mitchell to uh, purchase um, 17 acres um, from the Kiners uh, for $200,000 plus 1.44 acres of land just south of that property. Um, Stephanie, if you'd please pull up the map. Um, so that area on the, on the bottom half there is 1.44 acres that the city owns that really we, we don't use. Um, it, it's, it's there. Um, we do see a benefit to the property to the north. Uh, we could uh, use that to assist with our our watershed cleanup efforts. Uh, we have been working with BAR to look at some improvements we could make uh, to that property and assisting with uh, nutrient and sediment removal prior to the lake. Uh, with that, I can answer any questions you may have. Or, and Justin can add anything I missed. Do you have anything to add, Mr. Johnson? Okay. And Joe, remind us that this is a piece of property. Obviously, we know where it's at. It's between the West End Bridge and the and the Kelly property. And and then you have got or started plans on some wetlands or built. You can possibly, you know, it, nothing's for sure, but obviously it's in a, a prime area where it could help filter the water as it's coming into the lake. So Stephanie's pulled up on the screen some preliminary concepts. This first page here is the existing, uh, what it looks like right now. Um, second page shows the potential of a, an overflow for high flows uh, where you could potentially do an alum injection um, type treatment. 
Um, another option they looked at on page three um, is basically an overflow with a uh, detention area within there to help settle out sediment and nutrients. Um, number page four, uh, basically uh, digging a, a large uh, hole, which allows uh, basically a sediment trap or that would allow sediments to drop out uh, with that. And then the last one that you that we have shown is uh, basically another wetland uh, that higher flows would go over reducing velocities and allowing sediment and nutrients to uh, to settle out. Joe, on that picture, what are the blue pieces in the flow? They're like, say, similar to like a rock check that would help divert the flow over the property versus going through what the, the native channel is. It would be designed so that once the, the lower flows would go through the, the historic channel and then higher flows that would come through would be um, spread out. This work would be eligible for non-point source money. Would Correct, it not? yes. We, if we did move forward with one of these concepts, uh, we would look at using non-point source funds to fund that. Because it's not within the lake. Correct. Great point. <laughs> I have a question on the, the appraised value. Who and how did we come up with that dollar amount for swampland? It was, it was negotiated with staff, through staff. But I guess, uh, did you appraise it? No, I did not get the property appraised. Because it comes out to like $13,000 an acre. I'm not going to support it at that price because I've done a lot of research on this with both the kinders that were involved in it. And I don't think we're getting a deal because we're setting precedents upstream. We're willing to pay this. So I think we want to be really careful what we're willing to pay for well, when that 15.56 acres. Uh, I, I love the project idea, but not the price. So I do feel this property is a little unique, as in it's only 17 acres. Um, if we were looking at buying a quarter section or something like that, obviously, I don't think we would pay that price. You may um, have to upstream. and Because just north of the Kelly property, it went for 15000 an acre. So... I don't like is we have about 170 acres on the north end of the Kelly property. If we could get 15,000 an acre for it, it might be worth it. We did we did pay 15,000 an acre for our ground storage site. Um, so this is less than that. Um, yeah, we were you know, taking land out of production doing that. I can kind mm -hmm. of understand that. We're not really taking land out of production here. It it's farmed. Yeah, I know. Yep. I know. Not every year. You're not wrong. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What's your pleasure? Well, again, I'm just kind of maybe repeating myself, but the logistically, it, it's very difficult. If, if we truly want to try to to filtrate the water coming in, the best place for this is where it empties into the lake. And saying that, uh, there's not a, a better piece of property out there. So to say that we're buying it for agriculture, obviously, is not the case. We're buying it for a project. And yes, it's it's probably overvalued when you look at it on an agriculture, or, or it's, I'm sure it's in a floodplain, so you can't build houses on it, whatever. But... But in reality, as I, I am comfortable with the amount that uh, that it is, and, and trading the piece of property that we don't have any use for. Uh, so I'm going to support this, and uh, if if they come back and <laughs> and say that it's worth more, I think we'd have to even consider it at that point in time. It it's not going to pay for itself, and it's uh, but what it will be able to do is help us with the water coming down. And we know that we can't go up and take care of 350,000 acres, but what we can do is when it funnels it in, then we can try to capture all the nutrients and, and the sludge and the sediment and so forth. And it's just another piece of our huge puzzle that we're trying to put together. It comes to $11,764 an acre just and, you know, we do have uh, so many people in... divided by 17, yes. Yeah. Well, we're, we're giving, we are giving 1.5 back. So. 
We have a lot of people in the community who are saying we need to work on the watershed, and I feel like this is our opportunity to make good for them and do what we can to continue to make that progress. Um, so I, too, will be supporting this. I just think we've got to do it. How long will it take us to do something? Another four years, or will it be quicker than the Kelly property? So if approved tonight, uh, I would look at um, getting a contract with BAR, um, getting approval from the DANR to proceed with using non-point source funds to design a project. Uh, we've kind of done some of the preliminary work in talking with some of the permitting agencies about a few of our concepts. Um, so yeah, we, we would start moving forward, you know, soon. Dollar figure, Joe, is it? Kind of like the first one, like the Kelly property. But I know it's impossible for you to say, but I mean, are you doing more or less? Depending, depending the route that's chosen. You know, if the alum injection is, say, what what we think is the best benefit, that potentially could be more expensive because now we're looking at, you know, if we need to bring electricity out there, um, those types of things. I think overall, if it was just made a a wetland uh, per se, um, it would be. I want to say it would be less expensive than our previous project. You're talking 37 acres versus um, 17. Just to give you kind of a and grant idea. money will work for this that we have from the state DANR. So, yeah. Mr. Hanson, did you want to talk? I don't know. If you don't interrupt me, I will. First off, I'd like to thank Mr. Bathke for asking how much that was appraised at. Thank you. Good evening, Council Mayor. As you all know by now, my name is Stuart Hansen, and I'm here tonight hoping you'll vote no on purchasing the Kiner property for $200,000. <clears> One reason to vote no is because the vote shouldn't take place until after the June 4th election. Why? Because we don't know if the vote for applying for a loan to dredge the lake will be approved. Also, we may have different council members or a new mayor after the election. If there is a no vote on approving a loan application and there are new council members or a new mayor, they may go in a different direction. Another reason for voting no on approving the land purchase, the mayor has stated, as well as several council members and Joe Kippis of the Friends of Firesteel, have all said, when it comes to fixing the lake and the creek, you can't do one without doing the other. So if the vote for the loan application is not approved and we have new leadership, then maybe mechanically dredging won't happen. If dredging the lake doesn't happen, then doing work in the creek shouldn't happen. Again, as the mayor and several council members have stated several times, you can't do one without the other unless a few of the council members want to be hypocritical and vote to purchase the Kiner property. How would that look to the voters? And here's a serious question for the Friends of Fire Steel. If they honestly believe that a measly 17 acres of wetlands will make a significant difference in keeping phosphorus from entering the lake, and remember, Steve Donovan, the biologist working with the city on the 35-acre wetland up the creek, stated at a city council meeting, we'd have to impact tens of thousands of acres to make a difference. So if they say yes, that it would make a difference for 17 acres, then here's a very easy solution. Let the Friends of Fire still purchase the Kiner property and donate it to the city, or give the city $200,000 to purchase it. That would show the taxpayers how serious they are about donating to the cause. And then finally, on March 4th, on the first Monday with the mayor on KMIT, you, mayor, were asked, now, if, you, if the opportunity presents itself to buy more land in the watershed, would the city consider doing that? And your answer was, I don't know if we can afford to. So what's the best solution? The Friends of Fire still could solve this problem very easily and just purchase the $200,000 for the 17 acres. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, we need a motion for this, so we don't have a motion on this. Move to approve. Motion by Mr. Goldhammer, second by Mr. Barrington. Now we have it. Okay. Further discussion? Anybody in the audience want to come up and talk about it? Okay. Roll call, please. Smith? Aye. Charks? Aye. Sabres? Aye. Goldhammer? Aye. Dosher? Aye. Ricardo? Aye. Barrington? Aye. Bathke? Aye. Okay. Motion carries. Action to approve resolution R2024-23, plat of track one of Valeski Properties Addition in the west seven rods of the northeast quarter of the northeast quarter and in the in lot 3B 
of the northwest quarter of the northeast quarter of section 26 Township 103 North Range 60 West of the 5th primary in Davis County, South Dakota. Mr. Janius. Mr. Mayor and Council, um, I will be closing out this meeting for you for the rest of the night. <laughs> um, Planning Commission recommended approval of this 7 0. Um, this does fall outside city limits, but it is in the ETJ, so it's city zoning jurisdiction. It's urban development out there. Um, the applicant is platting out some acres. There is a um, a farmstead or a house on that property as well. There's already an access to that from Highway 38. Um, DOT has no issues with that access as well. Um, I can answer any questions that you have. Um, county will hear this at their April 2nd and April 9th meeting. Okay. Move to approve. Motion by Mrs. Turks. Mr. Bathke, is that you? Yes. Second by Mr. Bathke. Further discussion? Anybody in the audience wish to address this? Mrs. Valeski's kind of Huh. Okay. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carried. Action to approve resolution R 2024-24. Plat of lot one of Finley first edition. Mr. Janigas. Mr. Mayor and Council, Planning Commission recommended approval of this 5-0 with two absent, or excuse me, 5-0 with two abstaining. Um, Austin LLC. Um, has Make It Mine Designs right there. They are platting this into one lot for a future uh, development in this area. Um, it meets zoning requirements for the plat. I can answer any questions that you may have for this. Motion by Mr. McCardle. Second. Second by Mr. Barrington. Further discussion? Anybody know I switch to address this one? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried. Action to approve resolution R2024-25, plat lot one of Archer First Edition. Mr. Janigas. Mr. Mayor and Council, Planning Commission recommended approval of this um, with an updated first page, which is on the screen right now. We did not have that at the time of the meeting. Um, with 5-0, with two abstaining. Um, the reason why we wanted the updated, that has a couple of the easements that the city has for sanitary sewer and uh, storm sewer on there as well. Um, they were recorded at the Register of Deeds previously, but we wanted them on this plat as well. Um, they are platting this into uh, one lot for future development of the area. Um, there will be a TIF coming towards you for this location. Um, this would be Iverson's has a dealership just outside this, and they have their uh, building up on the hill is where the TIF will be for. I can answer any questions you have for this. To approve. Motion by Mrs. Chark. Second. Second by Mr. Smith. Further discussion? Anybody in the audience wish to address this? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carried. Action to approve resolution R2024-26. Plat of lots 12 and 14 block 4 Woods Edition. Mr. Janigas. Mr. Mayor and Council, Planning Commission recommended approval of this 7-0. Um, this is out in the Woods Edition. They are following their master plan. They're platting out a couple of their last lots that they have out there for sale. I can answer any questions that you have. Motion by Mr. McCardle. Second. by Mr. Barrington. Further discussion? May I nice wish to address this? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carried. Hearing and first reading on Ordinance 0 2020 rezoning Lot 4 and Lot North 5 feet of Lot 5, Block 11, D.A. Scott's First Edition, City of Mitchell, Davis County, South Dakota, from Central Business District to R4 High Density Residential. Mr. Janigas. Mr. Mayor and Council, this was published in the paper. Notices were sent out to neighbors. It was post, signs posted. Uh, Planning Commission recommended approval of this 7-0. There was one letter returned in favor, uh, one letter that was returned opposed to it for traffic concerns in the alley there from the businesses behind and if this was going to be multifamily residential. Um, it's a 55-foot uh, wide lot. Um, at this time, the applicant is looking to put a governor's house on this location. Um, in central business, you're not allowed to have residential dwellings unless it is above grade. Um, so they'd have to have a business below and have that up above. Um, across the street is R4, which is, makes it contiguous to uh, this location. I can answer any questions that you have. Um, I know uh, Terry Sabres from um, Mahi's here. They're the ones that are allocating the house towards this uh, um, governor's house. Is there a 
there currently a business sitting on that lot? No, no it's not. Empty. This is an old, we do our flyover every three years, <coughs> um, and the last one was done in 2020. Um, so there's no business on that lot currently. Um, there was some old, it was sold prior to this, or after this picture was taken. The owner of this lot actually has cleaned up the house to the north there um, and turned around and, re and sold that. They didn't take it for a rental. Um, what I've been told for this location as well is they are not going to use it as a rental, that they're going to sell it. Um, there are parameters that they have to meet since it would be a governor's house that they cannot profit a certain amount above what it would cost. This is where they jacked the house up and built under it. It's the lot to the south of them on Raleigh. Kind of behind Daylight Donuts in that area. Yep. Or, I'm sorry, on Lower. Yeah, behind Daylight Donuts. Directly behind Daylight Donuts. I'll move approval. <laughs> Second. Did you make a motion, Mrs. Charks? I did. Okay. Second by Mr. <laughs> Goldhammer. <laughs> It's pretty quiet second or first then. Discussion? Anybody in the audience wish to address this? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. All those nay. Motion carried. Motion to enter into executive session according to South Dakota codified law 125, 2, 4, and 3, employee negotiations and legal. So moved. Motion by Mr. Goldham, second by Mr. McArdle. Discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Opposed nay, motion carried. There will be no action after executive session.